Hello, how's it going? Hello! Hang on, hang on, here we go. There we go. Uh, this is uh, the part of the week where no one really wants to watch it. Uh, there's nothing really exciting happening, so I might as well do this because I want to talk about something, even though it's probably one of my least favorite formats. It's still fun to do. And also, I need to record some other stuff in this scenario. So, deal with it, okay? Deal with it. I'm slowly going back. I'm currently rolling with the uh, stand-up mic today. It means I'm instantly funnier. What's up with airplane food, am I right? Um, today I'm going to be talking about something I've done. Uh, it's going to be the third instalment or fourth. Is it the third or fourth? It's the first. It's the third instalment of um, I, I break down like a director's breakdown type of thing. And now I'm going to do it for one of my documentaries just so I can have a whole trilogy of me talking about my work. If you haven't already seen my documentary London for the Lens, I highly suggest watching it. For some people, it's their favourite piece of work I've done, such as my friend Joe when I was making it. It was during a tough time. Before I talk about it today, because it's probably one of my most successful films in terms of getting to festivals, until last night, when something cool happened. It's kind of joint, joint up at the moment. But still, it's pretty gnarly. Uh, but yeah, welcome back to the vlog. It is day 89. Day 89 of the vlog. Just for a bit of background, London for the Lens was a college project, and it's a documentary about my friend Craig Baker, who also has a channel that I'll be linking down below. He makes some great videos. Yeah, not a lot of people know that Craig and I are, are friends, and we went to the same college. My nan thought Craig was like, in his 20s and was like a full-time photographer. Craig's very tall. He's a tall guy. But yeah, it's a cool medium. Uh, I've I've seen a lot of documentaries at festivals. I've watched a lot of documentaries in my time. Uh, I've watched quite a lot of Vice growing up. Casey Neistat, I'd say Casey Neistat is is borderline documentary. Some of his videos. As well as people like Peter McKinnon where they've done stuff at the bucket shop. I kind of had a bit of a grasp of what I wanted to do. Uh, so London for the Lens was born from Craig's Instagram account called Lunch Hour London. And that account is where Craig would go into London during lunchtime and and take photos of workers on their lunch breaks. It's a really cool project. The opportunity arose and I thought, yeah, this is this is a great idea. God, there was a lot of break there was a lot of things with the production. So the studio day that we'd done with Craig or our, we'd done the questions was done in our college studio, filmed the black magic cameras, shot them probably a month prior to when we actually went out. So it was kind of a mixed match and stuff. I just wanted to not only represent Craig as a photographer, but um, represent London as a place of ambition, creativity, and people taking pride in what they do and what it should be. So I wanted to both do Craig a service as well as the city, you know, how diverse London can can be a shown a diversity through work uh, it's insanely important to show that clean montage at the beginning those shots are from london some of that was from into film festival when i went up there for that and then the third day was the day where we went to london with craig a very good day actually well it did start off great but no uh, there was problems with the trains so i had to get off and catch a bus all the way to westfield caught the dlr absolute bloody nightmare but we managed to get to greenwich and uh, Canary Wharf. Um, Canary Wharf is pretty cool. It's a bit, imagine Rockefeller if you've ever been to New York. The station has a few shops and quick service restaurants and access to certain buildings. So there was one point where I was recording Craig. We got asked to stop recording. I had to show the guy the footage. We didn't know we were in a building and Canary Wharf, it's very easy to stroll into buildings without knowing because you think it's the way out, but it's not. But yeah, if you've ever been to Rockefeller, it's a bit like that. So we walked around there. Uh, Craig took a few good photos of me that I've used in my portfolio for like headshots. The recording was pretty cool. We walked around kind of guerrilla style filmmaking. We got to witness Craig doing his art and going up asking the guy if he could take a photo. And the guy was really nice. I spoke to the guy a bit. But yeah, uh, recording there was pretty cool. After that, we just got some more B-roll. And it was a pretty gnarly day. We had a great time. I'm pretty sure we got wasabi as well, what I was very happy about. Post-production, uh, but it was hard. It was hard kind of trying to find the right time to make it. Because I could probably make it eight minutes, but I, di I didn't want to. Um, the opening shot title title image, I did a TikTok about this. You can go check that out for a full story. But basically, it was a time that Joe and I got from waking up at four o'clock and hiking up to the top of the hill. Completely worth it. And also, it kind of summed up the whole film. Taking this massive city view of London. Great, it came out on the third on YouTube, just after Natural Selection. I thought it'd be a really cool double bill to have. And it, it didn't actually do that well. It got probably about 50 views in its first night. And it's now up to, I think, 280. It got into a few festivals. So it first got into Pinewood. And then it got into a local film festival near me, Romford Film Festival. And then it got into the UFA short film festival in Russia, what was really cool. And it got into the uh, SLO Film Festival in California, what was amazing, but unfortunately it got cancelled. Uh, it was runner-up in the Into Film Festival, and it's got into a few more. But yeah, it's been really successful. 
My college picks up on it. Really amazing, like so good. And then after that, it got picked up by Havering. And then after Havering got picked up by the Romford Recorder and put on their Facebook. I didn't, they didn't tag me in it. I only found out through a friend who tagged me. So thank you. I think my nun found out it was in the newspaper before me. But yeah, it's surreal. It's crazy how much success this has brought me. I never thought I'd get the paper. So I'm absolutely over the moon. So I'd like to say a quick thank you to Joe and Archie for helping me out. As well as Craig Baker himself. What a legend. For letting me record him and obviously see it's all about him so go check out craig he's great at what he does uh thank you for the people at the romford recorder for printing it and then as well as the people at havering newsletter and havering sixth form for being legends as well as my teachers for helping me out and thank you to anyone who's checked it out so that does it for today lads thank you for joining me as always if you want to subscribe go ahead and subscribe subsp <laughs> if you want to like the video go ahead and like the video if you want to watch more make sure you check out the channel comment what you want to see next and i'll see you tomorrow um yay see you guys see you, see you guys bye Bye.